Thanks for tuning in to more NFL talk on the Our Lads Football Network as we go handicapping week five with Ryan Dunleavy of the New York Post. Ryan, how's everything? Good. Thursday and, night football. Yeah. Uh, th- I'll be working late, so I've already got the Thursday night game. It's a good one recording, and I'll be able to watch a game later on tonight. So I'm happy about that. Uh, the Sunday game uh, is also uh, a blockbuster with Buffalo and Kansas City. So that's going to be as good as it gets. And uh, speaking of uh, trends, uh, and I know you've capitalized on this one as one of your top picks. A little bit of a preview there. Uh, Monday night football home teams are 4-0 straight up and against the spread this season. So keep that in mind. Uh, with uh, the Baltimore as a four-point favorite against the Colts. So uh, a couple of things I wanted to talk about first, and this is strategy-wise, uh, regarding anybody out there that's already trying to figure out the season, uh, because this season is definitely different already. It's only been a month, four, we- four weeks, four games, but it's different already, handicapping-wise. And the reason things and, – and first of all, it's different because the favorites are not covering. And this is very unusual. Uh, normally, you, get, you can get like a 55% kind of, you know, 55 to 45, 53 to 47. It's very close, favorites and dogs. It's, it's, but it's usually the favorites that, that end up covering more than the dogs. But so far, uh, in 2021... Out of the games, and again, I think there's probably at least one pick them. I don't know, maybe a couple. But out of the 63 games that uh, went against the spread this year, the dog has covered 38, and the favorite has only covered 25. So the so we're talking, and, and by the way, what that also means is, because we always talk about the strategy of, the team that wins usually covers, and that hasn't changed. So if you win, you cover, and that happens out of 64 games, 53 and 11. So that means, man, if those 53 times you win, you're covering out of those 64 games, which means there's a lot of dogs that are outright winning football games in the NFL this season. What it also means is that I'm getting my butt kicked in our uh... – picks because my strategy is always pick good teams to beat uh pick good teams to win and cover you'll see i pick green bay almost every week i pick baltimore almost every week i very rarely go and i'm like okay i'm gonna pick the jets this week sure uh, so that would explain that trend would explain why last year i was really good at this and this year i'm really bad at it and out of the 26 games where we did not force you to make a pick of course, we have an upset that you, well, you don't have to make it, but those are definite, okay, uh, it's an upset, I'm going to make it. They have to win the game outright. Out of the 26 games that you have picked, 23 of the 26 were favorites. <laughs> and when the favorites are getting their ass kicked, uh, that means that's, I'm getting my ass yeah. kicked. Yes. So we'll see if it changes. It's possible. You know, it's, uh, we're, we're barely into October. So we'll see if that's in. We have four more weeks to go. Uh, we'll see if that changes by midseason. The other thing I want to remind people about, if they ever take a look at the way in which that I strategize, and, I, and we have it, we haven't put it up the last couple of weeks on the board, but we have in the first few shows, and it was basically a we, we had the billboards that posted the 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 formula that I use. And, I, and I'll talk more about this also with Mark Lawrence tomorrow when we talk college football. It is very important that everybody, if you do this seriously, you come up with your own formula, your own strategy. And I've had years of coming up with my strategy, my formula, and it's worked. For instance, last week, I had a, it's just wins and losses, okay? I went one and 10. Wow. And I had two winners on the week, my five star and my upset special. So based on my formula, I made forty dollars. Yeah, and I went one in ten with an upset special. How that's why 
and, and again, this is that was a lot. That's knowing yourself, knowing what you're good at, what you're really bad know. at. I, that to me, your formula needs to be tweaked. If that's what if that's that's what happens. Well, how does it need to be tweaked? That means I'd be normally I would have I would have lost five hundred bucks. You shouldn't go one in ten and make money. This isn't a this isn't a friendly game. This is the 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 the, the, the life lessons of making money. Yeah. You yeah. know that's exactly what this is. Yeah. So huh. now that's different in college football. I'll tell you I tell you that much. But and because my college football numbers are higher, I wager yeah. a lot more on college football because I make more money on college football. I actually yeah. college yeah. football should- to me is more predictable than the NFL. I should give you 500 real dollars and tell me to go make some money and tell you to go make me some money then because uh, your strategy, if you're one in 10, you're making money. I tell you, if I'm one in 10, I'm never betting again. So, well, that's there you go. But again, that's why I said it's and look, that's just that that doesn't ever happen. Yeah. Uh, that I was I was obviously very fortunate to get the five star and the upset. But what happened to me last week, because I'm more of a trend guy and you're not, is all of the, and and this happens once every four or five weeks, and not usually to the degree of one in ten, but it happens once every four or five weeks. If you follow trends a lot, the trends are just going to go completely the wrong way, yeah. and that's what happened to me last week. All of my trends, like for instance, remember I told you that I was going to give Mike Tomlin and his great trends yeah. one more week, and that blew up. Yeah. Uh, I uh, you take a look at the fact that Carolina Matt Rule was awesome on the road. That yeah. didn't count. Yeah. Uh, you, uh, the, the Chiefs were one, whatever, eleven and one against the spread, and I and I had won four or five straight with them, and now I finally lost. It happened in the same week. I lost all my other trends. The Rams were on a six and zero oh streak against Arizona. They lost. So all of the trends blew up in my face in the same week, and it happens, and you live with it. So that's why yeah. you I, look. Normally, I will lose three or four hundred bucks in a week. But that's why you have to make sure that you have a lot more of those plus four or five hundred weeks. Okay, now let's get into uh, week number five in the NFL. And we are going to start, first of all, with the London game, uh, the Jets in Atlanta. And I was already uh, thinking of taking the Jets in this one, and, and, I, and I'm like cemented in doing it uh, now that Calvin Ridley's not making the trip. Uh, Atlanta is already dealing with injuries in their defensive backfield. They, they are, they're passing offense is ter- defense is terrible. They can't get a pass rush. And that means Zach Wilson, if they don't get a pass rush, should hopefully, if you're a Jet fan, if you believe in Zach and his development, we'll have a little bit more time to throw the football. Confident builder after what happened last week. So Eric Harris uh, looks like he may not play. He's had a strong year at safety. They lost their slot corner, Isaiah Oliver. He's out. So they're going to put a rookie on Jamison Crowder uh, in the slot. That can't go well. Uh, so I just uh, – and, and Atlanta, I watched Atlanta, and you've watched Atlanta. They're just a very sloppy, ugly team. I think the Jets are, are feeling pretty good about themselves. Their defense, you know, has kind of been holding them in, in a lot of these games. And as long as Zach Wilson doesn't throw the game away, I think the Jets are going to win. I picked the Falcons. So uh, I don't like uh, – I liked the way Zach Wilson played. I just picked the Falcons because I think they're better. Haven't seen both teams up close as I have. I just think the Falcons are a more talented team. Now, look, I picked the Falcons before I knew Calvin Ridley was out. It feels a little disingenuous for me to have the Falcons pick in the post and then the Jets pick in here. Uh, I'm sticking with the Falcons because I just look, I can't say that a wide receiver makes that much of a difference. Like that would be that would be tough to do. But I think the Falcons are a better team. Uh I don't think the Jets can score as many points as they did last week. I like the Falcons in this game. I, I just think the Falcons are bad, but I don't think the Falcons are 2-15 and 15 bad. I think they're 5-12 and 12 bad. And if you're 5-12 and 12 bad, you need to get the 5 somewhere, and the Jets are one of the teams, I think, that are slightly worse. Well, just so. keep in mind, it's. Uh, it, 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 I think – the, the big deal for the Jets is you have to stop Quiterell Patterson because they couldn't stop right. McNichols last week. And right. Patterson's a better version. Now at Ridley out, it's Kyle Pitts, the rookie, the number two receivers out too. Gage hasn't played for the last few weeks. Yep. So they got their number three receiver, their number four receiver, and a rookie tight end with a running game that's terrible. 
And it's, that's Cordell Patterson. And if they can't stop Cordell Patterson, when it's one guy to stop, then uh, that's that's pretty bad defense. Um, I hope it's not one of those ugly 16-13 games because it could be. I think if Atlanta wins, it will be. But I think if uh, if it's a high scoring game, I think the Jets will win because I just don't. I can't imagine Atlanta is going to score a lot. Um, I just don't see it. Not not with Ridley out. I mean, Patterson is a real weapon. I mean, it, the, he they've made him into something he really wasn't in his career, which tells me that if it tells me that Arthur Smith gets more out of guys than. You know, he's getting the most out of guys, so it makes me think that they're three, four, five receivers. He'll find a way to use them. Uh, the And by the way, keep in mind that Ryan's making the pick on the show. It's not one of his picks. Um, but the Jets pick is one of my picks. Okay, so next up is Miami and Tampa. And Tampa is a 10-point favorite. Uh, Miami is getting 360 on the money line, and I'm taking the whole 360. This is sort of like uh, my strategy with the Giants last week is that I figured, okay, I really like the number 10. So I'm going to just risk the, the money line in there and go all the way because, uh, and we talked about this before, Brian Flores is 10-4 and four against the spread as road dog, including the cover against the Patriots in week one, the cover against Vegas a few weeks later. So he's even 2-0 and oh this year. He did it with Brissett in Vegas. So Brissett is back at quarterback. You know, he's just one in seven in his last eight starts. That's not good. Uh, it's really going to be the game will be won at the trenches because Miami's offensive line is not very good. We know Tampa Bay's is. Uh, but maybe this is the team that Miami can exploit in the secondary because Tampa Bay is one banged up secondary. Miami's a disaster on offense. I mean, I, I mean, I agree with you. Tampa Bay's banged up. So maybe a good offense could take advantage of uh, Tampa Bay. We saw what Mac Jones did last week in the rain. I would have liked to see that game played in good conditions, what his numbers would have been. But Miami's offense is a disaster. I don't, I mean, Fuller's injured. Um, the two is injured. The I just don't, I don't think they have juice. I don't think they have playmakers. I don't think they can score. Like, I think that you can score on Tampa. I don't think Miami can score on Tampa. Does that make sense? Well, I, look, I mean, I think the thing is, is it's really Brissett. That's the big injury. I'm not concerned with Fuller. It, it's I two and not I being mean, in there. Why? Why aren't you concerned with Fuller? Fuller can run right by you. For because a you still have Parker. You still have Waddle. You still have Jasicki. You still have Gat. You still have all your healthy starters. I mean, everybody's mm -hmm. in the game except Tua and Fuller. And Fuller yeah. wasn't even there last year. So yeah. I, I just I think it's the offensive line and Brissett, and it's not a good combination. It's a bad combination. I admit that. Uh, but also keep in mind, Tampa Bay is in a sandwich situation. They had the Super Bowl for Tom Brady one week. They'll have a short week coming up with Philly on Thursday night next week. They're playing Miami. They're a one win team. You know, I can, and they're, they're supposed to win. I could see a Super Bowl champion team kind of just not really being focused in this one. And this is a do or die season game for Miami. They lose this one. Forget it. You're not coming back from one and four. They will get two a back, by the way, next week when they go to London to face the Jags. You could tell me they're going to cover, I guess. What's the spread? 10? 10. Yep. You could tell me they're going to cover, I guess, or you could tell me that they're going to push and it's going to be 10. There's no way they're in any chance winning this game in the fourth well, quarter. Well, by, by the way, keep in mind, Tampa, Miami does still have a good defense. That's that's what they have to do to keep they, The offense can't throw the game away. They can't have pick sixes and fumbles and all sorts of just inept play where they just hand the game to Brady uh, because Miami still has a really good defense, and the defense is going to have to come up big in this one. Still no Gronk uh, for the Bucks again. Okay, next up, Tennessee. And uh, we both like uh, Tennessee this week. And I don't know how you don't like Tennessee this week. Uh, we, we, we both have him just in our regular uh, pick category. And that's only because of the fact that th this is like one of those games where it's almost like, I mean, there's no way Tennessee can lose to the Jets and the Jags back-to-back -back weeks. I mean, come on. But, you know, watch Tennessee win by three. You know, that's just the way things can be. Uh they're expected to get A.J. Brown back. That's that's why I just can't see Tennessee in, in a four-quarter, 
five minutes to go. We're going to have to run the clock out so Jacksonville doesn't get the ball back with A.J. Brown on the field and Derrick Henry coming off a loss. I just see Jacksonville quitting on its coach. That's what I see happening here. I, I see a team that doesn't want to play for its coach. Urban Meyer used the word grind the other day in a press conference. Then the Jaguars go out on the field and break down their huddle by saying one, two, three, grind. So they're mac they're uh they're making fun of their own head coach. That does not lead to good effort in uh the second half of games. It does not lead you to stick your nose in and make a tackle. That worries me. Here's a crazy stat. Urban Meyer had never lost four games in a row, and Trevor Lawrence lost four games in all of high school and college combined. And now they're sitting there 0 and 4. So two guys who never lose are have lost four in a row. They he Trevor Lawrence could have more losses in the first five games of his NFL career than he had in high school and college combined. Uh I think frustrations are boiling in Jacksonville. Uh some would tell you that's going to lead to a big-time effort. I would tell you it's probably going to go the other way. Well, I will say this, and I don't care. Um, if the players want to make fun of, let's just put it this way. This is an organization, an inept organization. They've lost 19 straight games. There's a lot of players on this field that have been a part of that there's not a lot of successful players on that field. If those guys are going to make fun of a legendary football coach when they stink, then look yourself in the mirror. Okay. Uh, I have no problem. If you don't like what your coach did, I don't blame them, but look yourself in the mirror before you go making fun of the coach. Who's like one of the greatest college football coaches of all time. And you guys are on a 19 game losing streak in so. college. In college, the program, the the team is the coach. In the NFL, the program is the players. Yeah, well, those players, that's not a good sign. Uh, it doesn't help that DJ Shark broke his ankle either. Mm -hmm. So that's not good. And they're off to he, London. So he's probably out for the year, right? Yeah, uh, more than likely, yes. And they're off to London next week. So that, that'll be a nice trip if they, like, get beat up. Mm -hmm. uh, it might be the, you know, who knows? Because the week after that's the buy. And yeah. you know what could happen on the buy. Uh, <laughs> there are only seven losses away from tying Tampa Bay's 26 game losing streak. Do you think they'll make it? No. Okay. Who are they going to beat? I don't have the schedule in front of me, but I mean, I, I thought the Jaguars would be in a Super Bowl in three or four years when they paired up uh, Lawrence and Myers. So. Next week huh? in London. Yeah. Yeah. So because if they don't beat Miami in London, they're in big trouble. Seattle, Buffalo, Indianapolis, San Francisco. They could beat Indianapolis. Okay. They beat him last year. If if Carson Wentz, if the if they continue to get banged up, yeah, I could see that happening. Sure. But Miami is a good shot. Probably their best chance. Uh, we'll see. Uh, but Urban Meyer keeping this job now this season, things aren't looking good. We'll see. Uh, we'll see if they can upset Tennessee. Me and you don't think that'll happen next week. Tennessee will host Buffalo on Monday Night Football. Okay. Next up. And I, I, based on your formula this year, I absolutely 100% knew this was going to be one of your top picks, <laughs> uh, let alone your five star. And that's Green Bay. Because when you look, when I saw the odds, I was like, this is one of those typical, you know, a ton of, ton of people, including myself, are going to look at this and go, this is too easy. It's only three. And I've seen enough two easies in my life that too easy means crap. Uh, and I understand why it's three. Um, uh, and that, and that has a lot to do with the fact that Cincinnati is just not a bad football team anymore. Joe Burrow is on pace for 38 touchdowns. Do you know which are the three quarterbacks who, in their second season, threw for 38 or more touchdown passes? Dan Marino. Yep. Peyton Manning. No. One's kind of a trick question in a way. 
Aaron Rodgers? No. Okay. Uh, because he didn't. Even, I thought you were counting like his second season starting. No, it was a good one. Play. But the other one is sort of in that line. A few years uh, later. Hmm. Uh, I don't want to kill the airtime here. Uh, I would uh, second season. Uh, I'll give you the easy one. Patrick Mahomes. Me, oh, yeah, that figures. Yeah. But then the, the hard one. What what year are we talking? Uh, this is, jeez, uh, 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 this is like, probably like 15, 15 years ago-ish. All right, so early, like mid-2000s? Something like that. I, I'm guessing, I mean, you know, but it's, it feels like that. Um, I would say the second year, I would say probably mm -hmm. Matthew Stafford. No, a little bit longer than just a little longer. Oh. Kurt Warner. Oh yeah. That's yeah. So that's 25 years ago. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, and, and he was old. Yeah, that does. Yeah, I mean, that's hard to. Yeah. Yeah. So, so uh, but anyway, so the point is, is that with Jair Alexander out. They're going to have Shandon Sullivan, Kevin King and rookie Eric Stokes covering that allotment of receivers and T Higgins is coming back. I, you know, this is going to be a high scoring affair. And uh, I think it's gonna be an exciting football game. I agree. I picked the ba the Packers, but I just don't. I I, I think it's gonna be a four quarter coming down to the wire football game. Um, yeah. I mean, I I think that, but you know, I've seen how many of those games have I seen Aaron Rodgers win with Absolutely. a touchdown pass? And I have no problem so, feeling that way. I felt that I feel like that way with the Bills this week. I will tell you this: if the spread was seven, I would not have picked this game. Three, what is it? Three and a half? Just I three. Thought, three. Three. I, I thought that was a home run. Uh, so, yeah, you know, like you said, you know me. I think the Packers are the best team uh, when all said and done. So, um, I, uh, it, to me, seeing a bang, I just don't think the Bengals are there yet. It's hard for me to believe that uh, Zach Taylor's there to make the decisions in a game like this to win. It's hard for me to believe Burrow's there. It's hard for me to believe the offensive line is there. Oh, the offensive line is definitely not there. Yeah, it's, I don't think the Bengals are there yet. The thing is, though, and I'm willing to see, because we all knew, we even talked about it last yeah. week, we, all, we knew that Cincinnati was not going to, it was not in a good spot as a seven-point home favorite after beating Pittsburgh, again, even against Jacksonville, because they're not yeah. used to it. And, and so you have to take that into consideration that it, it's not that, oh, they're not really that good. They barely beat Jacksonville. No, it's a week-to-week -week thing. Emotionally, they just couldn't handle being a favorite after beating Pittsburgh, and that's gone. Now, this is different. Now they can kind of wear the dogs. We're playing the big, you know, mighty Green Bay Packers without Zadarius Smith, without Jair Alexander, without David Bakhtieri. You know, so there's this is a, should be an exciting football game. But the Packers, you know, they're a better team, and – you know, the Bengals, by the way, will be at Detroit next week, and I just can't see them going five and one. That would be incredible. <laughs> yeah, uh, it really would. Yeah, by the really way, the Packers signed Jalen Smith. Were you surprised the Cowboys let him go? Uh, I was. Obviously, there's financial ramifications and whatnot. Uh, yeah, I was surprised they let him go. I don't, I don't really see what they gain from cutting him at this point. Look, he's he's a shell of what he used to be. Still an emotional leader on a team that is off to a good start. I don't know why you risk the chemistry there rather than just inactivate him or cut his snaps or whatever. I don't, from what I've heard, he's not the problem type that he would have revolted against that. But whatever, you give him a chance to start fresh in Green Bay. And I, I heard he's a good chance he's going to play this week. So, yeah. Um, by the way, also keeping uh, uh, the thing that, that it's not just Joe Burrow offensively. They have a good uh, safety duo in Von Bell and Jesse, uh, Jesse Bates. By the way, uh, Bates comes back this week. I really like Logan Wilson. He's in his second season at linebacker. DJ Reader, who was out last year, is back, and he's playing at a high level. And don't forget they signed Trey Hendrickson in exchange for Carl Lawson, and that's been a good uh, uh, switch for them at this point with Lawson on the shelf for the year. Okay, next up, the Patriots at Houston. Uh, the Patriots are a nine-point favorite. 
Uh, this is one of your regular picks, and this is my five-star pick. Um, I just look at this as a carbon copy of what happened a few weeks ago in New York with the Jets. It's Bill Belichick going up against rookie Davis Mills. And that's even going to be worse. Uh, so we all know what happens when Belichick goes up against rookie quarterbacks. Since Davis Mills has taken over, they've been outscored 64 to nine. And I know the Patriots offense isn't sexy, but they don't have to be against Houston. They'll be able to take a couple of takeaways and turn them into points. And I think they're going to be just fine. This is going to be like a 27, three, 20, 27, nothing win. Uh, the offensive line, we'll see if Trent Brown comes back. He's been out the last three weeks. On uh, Wendu and Wynn are on COVID uh, protocol right now. But other than that, uh, I just uh, I can't see New England uh, letting this game go anywhere near four quarters. Yeah, Greg, I totally agree with you. Uh, I, <laughs> as I, the more I listened to you talk, the more I was like, you know what, this should have been one of my four or five, three, four or five stars. Uh, Totally agree with you. Um, I guess I'm a little afraid of uh, New England's kind of banged up. Um, they're still starting a, you know, I don't know if they have a good secondary right now, but Houston's just totally inept. So Houston's going to score three, six, seven points in this game. Uh, New England should cover no problem. Uh, I'm glad it's one of my other picks. It probably should be one of my three, four or five star picks. I totally agree with you. It's like the jets game all over again, but with a worse opponent, uh, by the way. And the other thing too, is, is that new England's lost to Houston the last two years in Houston. So, you know, they're not taking this game lightly, especially at one and three. Yeah. So. Well, I mean, as according to you, you should be picking Houston because, Aren't the Patriots on that thing, that letter you, uh, stats you shared with me? Aren't the Patriots 0 4 and 1 against the spread against the AFC South their last five games? So, according to you, that I mean, I mean, you know, you there, there's Houston. a ton of those trends out there. I don't take yeah, them all. You should pick, you should pick Houston. I, I was counting on you picking Houston because they struggle against the yeah, AFC South, which no, must be no. something. I don't even something. look at those because actually. Yeah. Uh, it, it, I think even in the newsletter, uh, the guy picked Houston. I'm like, okay, yeah. well, you pick Houston. I'm not. So that's why I always okay. say I use I use the newsletter and all those trends to yeah. to back up my information. And that doesn't mean that I pick everything they do. I definitely am gotcha. not, not picking that one. Uh, yeah. all right, uh, Philly and Carolina next. This is your upset pick of the week. Uh, and this was I I. I this I, I kind of went back and forth, which is the reason why I just decided to stay away from it because this is a little bit strange game. I could I could definitely see Philadelphia pulling the upset. Uh, Carolina came back to life last week because they played a good opponent again. They yeah they beat the Saints, but I believe that was a you know one of those look ahead one of those um, hangover games for the Saints after beating uh, Green Bay uh, convincingly. Uh, and also let's keep in mind that the saints, uh, just lost to the giants. So, um, but, uh, look, Carolina is a, a good team. They just added Stefan Gilmore, uh, McCaffrey might play this week. So that I would be worried about, but the Eagles are still putting up, you know, points and that's something to consider. Uh, I don't know. I'm just back and forth in this game. And when you're back and forth in a game and if I was going to pick it, I would pick the upset because why not? I always do. That's my strategy. If I'm 50, 50 on a game and I end up picking the game, I always go the upset. I, uh, this is a pick against Christian McCaffrey being Christian McCaffrey. If he plays, I don't think he plays like himself. I think he's pushing himself because he sees a chance for Carolina to be good for the first time in his career. So I think he's rushing to get back early. It's a, it's a phenomenon I know players do. I know Saquon Barkley did. Um, so I think that's what's happening here. I hope he doesn't injure himself worse. Uh, I don't think he'll be full strength. And without him, I don't think Carolina can score with Philly. Now, look, Philly's defense is bad. But Philly Philly is not as bad as it looked the last couple weeks against Dallas and Kansas City, who I think are top 10 
caliber NFL teams. I don't know that Carolina is there quite yet. So I think, you know, I think Philly wins a shootout. I won't be surprised if they lose a shutout, a shootout, but uh, you're giving me what, four? Uh, well, you're getting 165 on the money line. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I would take, uh, I, I would take, uh, Philadelphia here and feel pretty good. And about it. the only yeah. thing that 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 concerning for me, look, Graham's on IR. You can't do anything about that. But I'm actually surprised that both Cox and Barnett haven't really played to their level yet. I don't know what's going on there. I don't know if it's a, a scheme change or something's going on there. But um, and even Slay's playing pretty well a corner. But there's just the linebackers are terrible. Uh, yeah, something's amiss there at Philly on defense. They're going to be hosting Tampa Bay on Thursday night football uh, coming up the Eagles. Carolina will host Minnesota next week, and they acquired Stephon Gilmore. So that was a big acquisition for Carolina. They'll get him back week seven when he's healthy. So, yeah, see how that works. Aren't you, yeah. I'm, I'm very surprised that Sam Darnold and Robbie Anderson have done nothing since Correct. week one against Other the Jets. Than that one pass. Yes, yes, yeah. Very surprised. Look, Sam Darnold ran for five <laughs> yeah. touchdowns. That that obviously yeah. can't keep up. Okay, next up, Denver and Pittsburgh. And I was not going to take this game until I heard that it looks like Teddy Bridgewater is going to play. Uh, that's all I need because Denver's better than Pittsburgh. I was watching Pittsburgh the last few games. The offense is so bad. It's like Roethlisberger, all he does is throw the ball five yards. It's just, he, he, he targeted Damian Harris two weeks ago, 19 times. A running back. I, I mean, I just, I don't understand what they're doing. And it's like, I, I saw him throw a couple of deep passes. You know, one was complete. It's like, he can throw the ball deep. I just don't understand their offensive strategy at this point. Uh, and just Denver's just a better team, like I said. I mean, I don't know what else to say. And I don't know what's gone on with Mika Fitzpatrick. Talk about players that have regressed. He's been awful this year. So I don't know what's going on there. Devin Bush has been a failed draft pick. He hasn't done anything that they expected him to do. Um, they are dangerous when you can get Watt and Ingram and Highsmith all together, but they haven't been all together most of the year. Uh, I don't know. It's just not a good situation for Pittsburgh right now. Uh, yeah, what I would tell you is I totally agree. I, I saw it firsthand with the Giants and Eli Manning. The hardest thing to do right now in the NFL is these quarterbacks get older. They're playing longer. They all want to be Tom Brady. And the hardest thing to do is to tell your franchise icon, enough's enough. Sorry, we're moving on. So the Giants did it probably two years too late. Pittsburgh's doing it probably two years too late. Uh, somehow L.A., <laughs> the Chargers navigated it perfectly. Um but uh, it's obviously going to happen with the Rodgers and the Packers next year. Ben Roethlisberger right now looks worse than Eli did in his last year or Rivers did in his last year. I think the Steelers are headed for a miserable 4-13 and year. And as uh, – what's that stat you love about Teddy Bridgewater? He's oh. like 7,000 and 0 no, or something. He's 23-3 and three against the spread on the road. Yes. So – uh, to me, that's an obvious. That's an obvious. They're the better team. They were outclassed by the Broncos. They came back to earth. But Pittsburgh is much closer to the Giants, the Jets, and the Jaguars. Three teams Denver handled than they are to and Baltimore, big, which is crazy and to say. Big Ben is one and four straight up, zero oh and five against the spread in his last five. Uh, when Pittsburgh is a favorite. Uh, and that's not a good role, obviously. Vic Fangio has never lost a spread when he's played against a losing team coming off a loss. And that includes 2-0 and this year. Okay. And, and by the way, they might get Darby back. Ronald Darby might return from IR and uh, play this week for the Broncos. Uh, next up, uh, we have that Minnesota-Detroit matchup. And look, bad teams can't afford injuries, plain and simple. And when Detroit's strength was their offensive line, and then they lose Ragnow, Decker, Crosby, Sewell now looks like he's going to, I mean, that's it. That's your strength of the team, and you're a bad team. You're in big trouble. Then they're secondary. They, they, Akuda's out for the year. They've lost Melifonwu in the, in the I mean, You just can't have 
injuries when you're Detroit and they have injuries and now they're playing a Minnesota team that's desperate for a win. Yeah, isn't uh, Swift is banged up too? He's right? banged up, I but mean, he oh, he always seems to be banged up. That guy. Yeah, yeah, it was, yeah. I just and uh, Minnesota's beaten Detroit seven straight. They've covered six out of the last yeah. seven. Last last week I picked the Vikings and I uh, excuse me. Last week I picked the Lions and I said you don't want to pick it. This is not a team you want to bet against because they're feisty and they don't quit. And then. To me, they look terrible well, against the Well, the problem Bears. was, I mean, they had the first three, three, they had three straight, not three straight, but they had three drives inside the red zone. They came away with no points. Yeah, well, bad teams find a way yeah. to do that. So, so, so to me, I'm not, I'm going to go against what I said last week, and I'm going to pick a Vikings team that I, you know, is going to need every win it can get to get to nine or, you know, nine or ten wins. Uh, I can't see them letting this division opportunity pass them by. And, and this is not one of your regular picks, but this is just a pick you're going with. Minnesota at Carolina. Uh, Detroit will host Cincinnati. And, uh, yeah, it's not looking good for Detroit. But for Minnesota, that Cleveland game last week, that was hard to watch. I mean, that was just – that was an ugly, ugly football game. But to me, that was – that said more about Cleveland than it did about Minnesota. Well, Cleveland's defense was very impressive last week, and they probably would have blown him out if Baker Mayfield was was playing well. But he wasn't. I have a, I have a friend with a bet on Baker Mayfield preseason bet as Baker Baker Mayfield was I think fifty to one as NFL MVP. That's he over. can uh, yeah. rip that. That's tough. He can rip that up. Uh, all right, uh, New Orleans and Washington, and this is uh, one of the games where it took me about five seconds to to say I'm not touching this one. Yeah, I totally – I thought you were going to say five seconds to pick it. No, I agonized over this one. I want no part yeah. of this game. Saints are favorite by two. They got a bye next week. Washington will host Kansas City. Cornerback William Jackson has been a complete bust for them. Collins, the former Giant, has done nothing for them. They have, they've now put Logan Thomas on uh, IR, so that's no good. Scherf is, is out for the next couple of weeks. They still have a good offensive line. That, that's that been good for them. They still have a good defensive line, even though they're not getting enough sacks statistically. Uh, Samuel Cosme was a really good second-round draft pick uh, that's helping him out at tackle. But keep in mind, McCoy and Armstead, as you know, is covering the Giants, did not play last week for the Saints. They did not practice yes. on Wednesday. And they're going to go up against that Washington defensive line. Um, and also, the Saints have missed Marcus Davenport. You know, he's been out all year. And that just has hurt their pass rush. The Saints are 0-2 straight up and against the spread as a favorite this year. But Washington is 0-2 straight up and against the spread at home. No. I uh, on no part of this <laughs> game. That Washington defense has underachieved. To me, they're one of the most underachieving units in the NFL, uh, especially the defensive line. Uh, the Saints, I don't know. Look, I'm just going to call this what it is, Greg. I think Sean Payton's a great coach. I don't watch him every week. I see plenty of him in primetime games over the years. I think he's a really great Hall of Fame caliber coach. He coached himself into a loss last Ego. week. If you watch what he – Ego. It, if you co watch the way he coached the game against the Giants, it is – the way he played that game is mind-boggling. He doesn't trust Jameis Winston. And if you don't trust your quarterback as a coach – you're going to make really stupid decisions. And in a game that's going to be close, like I think Washington, New Orleans is, I would want to give Peyton the advantage. I'm going to give it to Ron Rivera because I think he – this is crazy. I think he trusts Taylor yeah. Heineke more than Sean Payton trusts James Heineke Winston. had a really good game last week towards Atlanta. So, yeah. And I don't understand that either because Winston hasn't had one of those games yet. You know, he hasn't had one. Of, oh, the old Jameis Winston's if, back. If you watch that fourth quarter, Sean Payton, that loss is 100% on Sean Payton. Okay, now, um, we might as well then segue, skip a couple of games because the Giant game is at 4 o'clock, like some of these other 4 o'clock games I was going to go with. So the Giants pull off the upset. Uh, and Barkley, you know, made that big play. And at that mean, look, this has been part of the problem is that bad teams, when there are injuries, people don't, people forget certain players aren't there. 
And it hurt the Giants so much to not have Barkley there last year. And you knew it was going to take Barkley a little bit to get going this year. And we don't even still know Mm -hmm. if will he have another good game this week or does he need another week to kind of get good again? And is he, you know, will he not be 100% until 2022? But when Barkley is making big plays, it is such a big difference to this football team and it gives him shots, you know, in these circumstances like last week. Um, I still think, though, you know, they're a dangerous team. Uh, they do have a bunch of injuries. So what's the latest? Is it looking like the uh, is it looking like the, Thomas is the only injury, the only key injury who may not play? I think Thomas okay. will play. He's limping around practice, but he will play. And he's having a great yes. season at left tackle. Uh, Slayton and Shepard, I don't think will play. And uh, I would doubt Jabril Peppers plays. He might, I guess. There, he'll probably be doubtful tomorrow on the injury reports. She- Shepard and Slayton, I think, will be out. But they didn't play against the Saints. Yeah. And Kadarius, it was actually a good yeah. thing in a way because got, you got to see John Ross and Kadarius Tony what they could add to this offense. Look, the Giants found something, I think, offensively. I think they'll be able to score against the Cowboys. I think they found an aggressive way they want to play. I think that's a good thing. But the Giants defense is setting off five alarm fire. Um, I did the research this week. There's been 64 NFL games so far. So so that means there's been 64 NFL winners. The Giants had zero sacks, zero quarterback hits, and one tackle for loss and won the game. That's happened three times so far in 64 winners of the season. So you're just not doing it again. If you can't pressure the quarterback, you're not winning. It's an anomaly to win if you don't pressure well, the quarterback. what's happened? I know so, look, it wasn't like Blake Martinez was having a good year when he got hurt anyway, but he was a big part of the defense last year. But what's happened? Why, why aren't they? What's the difference? It's the same scheme. It's the same co- coordinator. It's the same coach, same players. Uh I really don't know. I the I think the theory going around with people I talk to is that last year everybody played, and you can't prove this, but last year everybody maxed out. You're not going to get a better season from Logan Ryan. You're not going to get a better season from Leonard Williams. You're not going to get a better season from Blake Martinez or from uh, Jabril Peppers. They all had career years, and people thought, okay, because they're you know in their mid twenties, most of them. They're on the rise. Well, that might have been peak and now crash back down to earth. That's really the best thing I can come up with. Yeah, very strange how that's uh, turned out. But now Martinez out for the year, and 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 they're not getting much from Ajalari. He has three sacks when the team has six. Oh, that's good. So, that's but, working. Uh, they're not getting much. The problem is they're not getting much from anybody else off the edge. Lorenzo Carter's done nothing. O'Shane Zemines is barely an NFL player at this point. And big so, surprise, uh, yeah. nobody could have called this. The offensive line sucks outside of Thomas. No, the yeah. offensive line was uh, – now look, for the most part, that's true. The offensive line is coming off its great ga- best game in th- three years. And we'll see years. if that keeps up. Uh, it's had a bad <laughs> season. They've started four different combinations in four games. They've started four different left guards in four games. That's not a formula for success, but it was against the Saints. The Saints got no pressure against the Giants, which is why Daniel Jones was bombs yeah. away. And now that could be doomed for – that could be a good thing for Washington or it could be, well, that was the Giants put it all together last week and that's it. You won't see that again for another few weeks. So we'll see what happens. But look, I'm not I – went, I went with them last week and, and I'm going back with them just because of the spread. I mean I'm not going away from 18-3 and three against the spread in the last 21 as a road dog. I'm just not doing it. Um, Dallas, meanwhile, they're getting a little bit better on defense because the secondary has been picked up a little bit with Diggs and Brown. But other than that, you know, Parsons is giving him a pass rush because he's playing out of position. The front seven is just not doing anything for the Cowboys. And until they get Lawrence back, uh, they're still susceptible. So that's why I could see this is a high-scoring game, but I could still see the Giants covering the game. But you, you're you actually taking Dallas to cover as one of your picks, right? Yeah, I am. So we'll go against each other yeah. in this one. Dallas 4-0 in the stats 
Uh, so they've been, uh, they have outgained every team they've played, including Tampa Bay this year. And that has a lot to do with that offensive line, which is back to elite status. By the way, Jan Levine, uh, my uh, co host for Jets FM, just uh, sent me a Twitter text that the Jets have uh, given John Franklin Myers a four year, $55 million extension, $30 million guaranteed. So he, he's earned it. That was a hell of a pickup. The Rams letting a high, a pretty high draft pick go because they just didn't have enough bodies. They just couldn't keep everybody. And the Jets were able to pick them up for nothing. So, yeah. All right. Cleveland and the Chargers. This should be an interesting game. First thing I thought about was taking Cleveland when the week began. I switched to the Chargers. And then I said, well, I'm just staying away from this game. Uh, I can see why you would like to take the Chargers in this one. Uh, I don't think they're getting any respect. Uh, this is actually your three-star pick of the week. and uh, But again, it's the Chargers at home. Can they win two straight in this situation? I uh, will see. But I was very impressed with Cleveland's defense, as I said last week. Clowney, Garrett, even Tack McKinley has started to play well uh, for uh, helping the Browns out on defense. They get Anthony Walker back. Uh, he was a former cult, hasn't played yet. He should return in this game. Um, but, uh, that's, uh, I just Baker Mayfield. That's the reason I decided to kind of switch and go back. Cause I don't know what the hell's wrong with Baker Mayfield. Well, they say he has a show. And that could be it. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I just think they've slept, walked through too many games. And when you do that against a good team, you're going to lose. They've gotten away with it the last couple weeks. Uh, the chargers, I feel like are a team on a mission. To prove they're an elite team, and they, I mean, they just beat the Chiefs and the Raiders, and people are still yeah. like, eh, you know, I need to see more. Yeah. So, uh, no, I think these are even though the the Browns have won three in a row, I think these are t- two teams headed in different directions right now. So, give me the Chargers. Uh, look, if you can win at home in front of a zillion Raider fans, oh, yeah. then That's... the then I'm not worried about. Uh, you winning at home against the Browns, who I like. I said, I just think right now, then the Ra- Metaphorically speaking, the Browns need to be punched in the face, and I think the Chargers That's are going to do it. And I'll tell you, I like both these. Co- I like both these coaches. I think both these coaches, Stefanski offense, Staley defense. I think both these coaches are among the two best. You know, whatever they are, under forty-two coaches Brandon in the Staley. NFL. Uh, by the way, Cleveland four and zero has uh, they have, but again, competition. They did. Out yardage Kansas City, though. So they have out yardage every team they play. They will host Arizona next week. The Chargers are at Baltimore next week. That'll be a good one. Both teams are three and one straight up and against the spread this year. But I agree with you. I like that. Cleveland needs to get smacked in the face. It's not because of the defense, really. The number one ranked rushing offense, the number three ranked rushing defense, and if they had any sort of quarterback play, this team would be unstoppable right now. Okay, next up, the Bears in Las Vegas. Las Vegas is a five-point uh, favorite in this one, and both of us will take Las Vegas. Uh, so uh, that's probably not a big surprise. I have him as a three-star. You have him as one of your picks. This is more about, I don't really care what Chicago did or what Fields did against Detroit. I, I don't care about that. That means nothing. Now they got to step up a competition to play a real NFL team. And, and and the last time Fields played a real NFL team, Cleveland, he was he, he looked like a high school quarterback. So they've been outscored 60 to 20 on the road. Uh, Khalil Mack is banged up. I'm sure he'd love to play against his former team, but he's not 100%. They haven't had Hicks uh, play this year. He's a big part of the defensive line. And uh, coming off a loss, I, I see the Raiders all charged up for this one. No David Montgomery as well for the Bears. No, I think you said everything I need to say there. I mean, my point was going to be the fields against the Browns was uh, eye-opening that he's, you know, let's uh, ease back on putting Justin Fields in the Hall of Fame. (laughs) I know he's starting. It's the right decision to make him the starter, but but he's going to go through some of the same troubles that Zach Wilson and Trevor Lawrence. And and you know what's really helping the the Las Vegas out is not only, look, the veteran in Gawkway has been a nice signing so far, but Max Crosby has all of a sudden blossomed into an every down, you know, all around defender. And the secondary, they got the young corners, Trayvon Mullen, um, 
Nate Hobbs, the rookie, has played really well. Uh, and he's a, he was a guy that was a fifth round draft pick. And also the guy that we talked about that, that, that uh, we liked, uh, the safety from TCU, Merrick. Trevon Merrick has had a pretty decent start. He's playing a lot in the secondary. And I think one of the underrated signings in the NFL for free agents was uh, Casey Hayward. I think he's done a really good job in that secondary, leading, helping to solidify the back end for the Raiders because he knows Gus Bradley. He came from the Chargers, and that's helped him out a lot. Okay, let's now go to the final two games at 4 o'clock. No, the one more game at 4 o'clock, and it's a big one. San Francisco and Arizona. Arizona is a five point, five and a half point favorite in this one. And um, you have stayed away from this one. I have not. This is this will be one of my upset picks. And uh, it was basically a good team getting two to one is my is was one of the reasons. And two, I didn't even need to see the trends. I knew what the trends were going to be because Arizona is not. Uh, good in this spot historically. And they almost blew it against the Vikings a few weeks ago when I took the Vikings in that game as a, as an outright upset too. Minnesota should have won that game. They missed a field goal. But if you look at it, Arizona uh, two and eight against the spread. The last 10 is a home favorite. There's a lot of other bad trends in this spot for Arizona. And there's a good trends for San Francisco. They're seven to three uh, last 10 is a road dog. Um, I am concerned with Jimmy Garoppolo's injury situation. But at least Lance has played a little bit. Uh, I, I just think this is a spot that Arizona coming off the big win against the Rams. San Francisco is now desperate for a win. They've lost two straight. They don't want to lose three straight. Uh, yeah, I, I, nobody, I mean, nobody wants to lose three straight. I just think Arizona has right now the most fun offense to watch in the NFL. Uh, they, can, uh, they can run. They can pass. They can they have young guys. They have old guys. AJ Green scored two touchdowns last week. James Connor scoring touchdowns. What is fantasy football in 2013? Hey, Cliff like, Kingsbury. To, they, he was laughed at. Yeah, yeah. To me, uh, like like you said, Trey Lance. He's played a little, but I don't think he's ready to put up 30, 32 points in a game, no. which is what it's going to take against Arizona. Uh, uh, San Francisco's defense going to do it. I mean, they're not that bad. I mean, I, I don't see. I mean, why? Why the Rams defense couldn't do well, that it? That was shocking. The, yeah, that was shocking. I mean, the Rams defense couldn't do it. The Titans defense couldn't do it. Who uh, else Titans did they beat up? They beat defense, so. Who else did they beat up? Uh, Minnesota Vikings. The Vikings. Yep, and the Jaguars. Yeah. The Rams yeah. won. So. And and watching the Ram game, that was a game where every time, it's like it was like seven times in the game that. The Rams had Arizona at like third and five, third and seven, third and eight. And like every key time, Arizona got the first down. And it was just a backbreaking yeah. situation for their defense. Kyler Murray, and I don't want to overstate this. I think Kyler Murray's the best dual threat quarterback in the NFL. And some people say Lamar Jackson, oh, no. but we've chronicled. Kyler Murray's a much better Christ. passer than Lamar Jackson. Correct. Lamar Jackson's a better runner, but pound, for, but. When you add the two together, I think I Kyler Murray's the best. Hundred percent. I, th I think he's the best there is, and right now there's right now that's how the NFL's played, and they have the best guy doing it. So if they can keep him healthy, I mean, I, I, I don't see any reason they can't compete for the NFC title. Uh, Not the NFC West. The absolutely. NFC. Yeah. Uh, the dog has won four out of six in this series, including San Francisco upsetting Arizona uh, last December. Uh, in Arizona. Okay. Uh, next up is the primetime games, the Sunday night game, Buffalo, Kansas city chiefs favorite by two and a half in this one. And this was a game that I, I knew I was going to pick as one of my top picks. I just didn't know where I was going to fit him in. The only reason I don't fit him as a top, top pick is because it definitely the chiefs, but I feel very confident that this is – see, I don't look at Buffalo like Baltimore, even though Baltimore finally beat Kansas City, but it took a fumble late for them to do it. I just – I don't think Buffalo is going to get into that rut because they've already lost them twice last year. I just don't think it's going to be one of those things. Buffalo's defense has been fantastic. Kansas City can't stop anybody. So you got a Buffalo offense that's humming. 
a defense that's humming against a Chiefs offense that's humming and no defense. So I just think Buffalo is is just gearing up for this AFC Championship rematch, and uh, I feel good about that. That's why Buffalo is going to be my four-star pick of the week as a three-point dog. Buffalo would be one of my three, four, or five stars if they – if Kansas City was undefeated, which I know is a crazy thing yeah. to say. Like, if Kansas City was better, I'd pick Buffalo. But I just feel like Kansas City need knows they need to win this game. Like, you know, they're not, you know, this isn't an undefeated Kansas City. Like, Kansas City loses this game. They're 2-3, and three and, you know, they're in last place in their division. So um, that scares me. I do like Buffalo in the game. If I had to pick it, I'd pick Buffalo. So I uh, do like Buffalo in this game. I just think... It, like you said, it means a little more to them. If it was a playoff game, I'd pick Kansas City. But I think the, I think Buffalo lo- kind of like Baltimore to me. I know you said it isn't the same. I think it is. They need to get over the. No, no. no. What, I, what I said, was saying is, I don't think Buffalo is going to lose the way Baltimore did. If they lose this game, they're Baltimore. Baltimore didn't lose. Baltimore what I'm saying, won. And that's why I said they finally beat the Chiefs and they did it with a late yeah. fumble. So, yeah, come well, on. They, they wins a win. Wins no, a but win. that's what I'm saying. But so, they finally did it. If Buffalo loses yeah. this game, they're, ba- they're Baltimore. They're Baltimore before yeah. they won. I, don't, I think Buffalo's better um, than Baltimore. I got you. Yeah, no. Uh, but I uh, look, you just poo-pooed. My Arizona offense is so good by saying Tennessee, Jacksonville. Well, Buffalo's defense has shut out uh, Houston and Miami. Sure. Not exactly uh, world beaters. But they did what so they were supposed to. High scoring, high scoring game, Zero. obviously. But they huh? did what they should be doing. Zero. Yeah. Hi, obviously high scoring game. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, and you know what? All those trends and whatnot seem to favor uh, the Bills. Uh, Josh Allen, I think he's twelve and one, uh, twelve and one or ten and two. Twelve and maybe one straight up versus an opponent off a straight up against the spread win. So I mean that's pretty impressive. So and I, again, I just think intangibly it means more to them. So uh, I think they go there, and I think they and beat again, them. the Chiefs, even though they covered last week, two twelve and one in their last fifteen. Okay, because you know Buffalo could still lose this game and cover, and that could happen with the Chiefs. Chiefs win 27-26. You know, one of those things. All right, Monday Night Football. Uh, This is more for me. This is definitely my third of the three uh, upset picks I'm putting in there. It's basically a Hail Mary for the Colts uh, because I'm still not 100% sold that Baltimore is just this team that could go out there and just beat anybody. Uh, It's about Lamar Jackson. He's a great player. Uh, There's no question about it. But uh, the Colts finally got a win last week that they needed. And uh, look, this is going to be one and lost, I think, on both sides of the line of scrimmage. You have a Ravens offensive line that isn't very good right now, but they got Lamar Jackson running around, so it doesn't matter as much. Where on the opposite side, the Colts offensive line is banged up, and Carson Wentz can't run around, and it doesn't matter as much. So that's really it is. is which, which line of scrimmage will be won more? That's where you do favor the Ravens. I completely agree with that. But I don't think the Colts are a bad team, and they're a desperate team. They need the win. Um, like I said, I, I think this is my third of three uh, upsets. Uh, I think they have a shot. They have to get off to a good start. Um, we'll see if the Ravens uh, can capitalize off of their convincing win last week which definitely aided uh, into the fact that uh, Bidgewater got hurt in the second quarter. I'll roll with Baltimore. I always four do. star. Uh, Your four star pick. I always do. Always do. Always roll with Baltimore. Uh, I don't, I don't think Indianapolis is a bad team. I think they're a team that's playing. That's been hit with a lot of adversity. That's playing poorly. So I don't really, I think they're making way too many mistakes. They're probably feeling a little bit of the pressure that they should be better than this. Uh, I like Baltimore. I think they'll rally behind Harbaugh, who's obviously been under fire for the way he finished that Buffalo game. Uh, yeah, that you know, was... trying to get the hundred yard yeah. streak. I won't be surprised at all if Buffalo, ju- if, excuse me, if Baltimore just runs this ball down the Colts' the road. If they say, "Okay, you didn't like the way we went for a hundred and one yards last week. How about we get two twenty this week?" And uh, set the record in style. Uh, 
Quentin Nelson, as we know, is out. Uh, throw on top of that, Eric Fisher has not played well so far. Uh, and for the Colts, uh, for the Ravens, keep in mind, of course, Marcus Peters still out. And we don't know what's going on with Stanley. He's been banged up most of the year. Uh, first of four straight home games for the Ravens. We touched up on this last week. They will not be on the road again until November 11th when they travel to Miami. They will host the Chargers next week. The Colts will get back on the winning column next week when they host Houston. All right. So once again, just quickly run over uh, the picks. Uh, your your uh, five stars, Green Bay, four star Baltimore, three star the Chargers. Eagles are your upset. You also like Tennessee, New England, Las Vegas, and Dallas. My five stars, New England, four star Buffalo, three star Las Vegas. My upsets are Miami, San Francisco, and Indianapolis. And my regular picks are the Jets, the Titans, the Packers, the Broncos, and the New York Giants. So that'll wrap it up. Next week is uh, week six already in the NFL. Things go by quick, especially in college. They go by too quick in college. You know, it's like uh, before you realize it, you only have like three or four games left in college. And it's like, what happened? So I'll talk to you again uh, next week when uh, we wrap up the Rutgers Michigan State game and uh, look ahead at Rutgers. Uh, what do they play Northwestern next week? I believe, right? I think that's where they play because uh, they're going to be on a bye soon. I think that's after the game upcoming. Mm-hmm. Want to double check? Yeah, uh, at Northwestern, and then they have a bye. And we'll have a week off. So. Ryan, appreciate it as always. Uh, enjoy the games. Where are you going to be this week? You're gonna. You're not going to Dallas. I'm you are going, going to, to Dallas. Dallas. That's a nice stadium, huh? A little barbecue. Uh, yeah, nice stadium. Very nice. Uh, very nice stadium. Obviously, Jerry Jones. It's money. You know, he got his money's worth for sure. And uh, I have fun in Dallas. Good food. You know, good good atmosphere. Good two teams that don't like each other should be a fun I agree. game. Enjoy yourself. We'll talk to you next week.